Greetings. Welcome to the Yang Style Tai Chi course. I'm Michael Gilman. This week we have a great lesson. We're going to be examining the art, the training art of what's called Tui Shao, push hands or join hands, which is one of the training practices of the Tai Chi Chuan repertoire. And push hands is a is sort of a weird term. Tui Shao is better, but push hands, it's an art where two people face each other and explore exchanging the basic energy principles of Tai Chi. It's the, it's the step after students have uh, mastered the form. They then start to work with a partner to uh, understand the principles that they've been working with in the solo form. And um, it's a lot of fun and it's very difficult because it's uh, simple and yet one has to pay very, very, very close attention. And um, this exercise works with developing sensitivity, balance, strength, coordination, and um, as I said before, exploring the basic principles and energies of Taiji. Now, it's called pushing hands because we use our hands to work with a partner. But in Tai Chi, we never exactly, everything comes from the legs. So um, if we say push hands, it, it's sort of very misleading. And, and I'll explain that when uh, my uh, co-teacher and training partner comes in here. So I think actually, why don't you come on in, uh, Stephanie Morell is going to be uh, helping me and uh, helping us. So thank you very much. Okay, so um, the basic stances, there's two major groups uh, of training practice. One is called fixed step and one is called active step. Now we're going to be working mostly with fixed step, uh, which means that, that your stance is and stays the same. We do change feet. Uh, on occasion because the leg can get kind of tired from working on one leg. But um, let's assume the basic stance. So if Stephanie faces me, now she's in say bow stance. Now if you've done, if you've explored the solo form, bow stance is the shoulder width stance, one foot is forward, the back leg is about a 45 degree angle to the front leg. And it's very important in pushing hands that you have this correct relationship. If the stance is too narrow, the person will, will not have balance and it'll be easy to lose the balance. If it's too long, the person will not be able to move uh, easily and well. So the basic shoulder width stance. And it's also important not to, uh, if, if say I'm facing you in both stance, not to be too narrow. Even though you might have shoulder width, if it's too narrow, it's easy to lose one's balance. We need to have what we call a good solid base of support. So if, you've sta if Stephanie faces me with hers, then for this exercise, I face her. And in this case, we both have our right foot forward. And to start off with the feet, the instep or ball of the foot should be about on the same line with about a hand's distance in between the two feet. The bodies face each other. Okay. Now, we're going to start off with the most basic of all, which is called single hand, join hands with fixed step. Single hand, join hands with fixed step. So in order to start, what we're going to do is join the back of our wrists together. Now, it is very important to stay relaxed. If our shoulders are up, then sh there's so much tension in here, she will not be able to feel what exactly it is that I'm doing. So we keep the shoulders relaxed. The touch is very, very light. The touch is as light as we possibly can make it. 
Now, one of the major skills that we're going to be working with is what we call sticking. So let's start off with a very basic exercise to develop the sense of sticking quality. So we keep our wrists together. And basically what's going to happen is let's start off with Stephanie following me, which means that she's sticking to me. I am at this point moving forward and backward. Just the most simple basic movement. My arm is slightly extending what we call pong, expanding outward, and Stephanie's arm is retreating, or what we call lu, her energy is moving back. You also notice that Stephanie's body is turning slightly to her right. Now you have to keep in mind that Tai Chi Chuan is a martial art. And if, say, this was a martial art, I was trying to punch Stephanie, well, she would be turning and what we call neutralizing, drawing my energy to the side. Do you see? So she starts this training by she's shifting her weight back and turning. I am doing the same. I am going forward. As she neutralizes me, I, my body is turning slightly to my left. So this is the most basic kind of getting a sense of gentle, gently and easily sticking. Now one thing, there's a very great tendency when working with a partner of forcing things out of the way. For instance, if she was coming in, of moving it out of the way. Well, this is a no-no in pushing hands because the minute I use force against force, I have overcome one of the most basic principles of Tai Chi, ignored one of the most basic principles of Tai Chi, and that is follow the energy. One of the most basic of our principles, when her energy is coming in, I just follow it by me. You see, I haven't moved it in any way. I have just followed it. Now you see what's happened if by my following her energy, her energy is now extinguished. She is at the edge of her ability to do anything. She is now exposed and weak and I can pull her, up, pull her out of balance or manipulate her in some way or other. So the idea with push hands is to always try to get the person to move out of their root, out of their center, by following the energy. I'm not using any strength. The minute, if I start to use strength against her now, you can't, if you could feel this, her body got rigid and hard and firmed up, and now she's in her root. She's more, I made her more solid because I tried to force the situation, you see. When she's pushing in, if I, if I resist, if I give her strength, she becomes stronger. And thereby, it becomes uh, like a bullfight, to, to, you know, to, we're budding horns here. So, most basic, let's change, uh, change feet here. So, it's a, so again, you want the feet are very close, about a hand's distance in between the two feet, and the, and the uh, arches are around the same, back foot's about a 45, and we'll join here. So, very simple. Now, anytime you're doing partner exercises, it's very important to have your intention correct. What I am doing is I am going right for Stephanie, and she is turning and neutralizing me. Now, what happens is, since I know she is going to be neutralizing me, pretty soon I'm sort of losing my consciousness, and I'm going every which way, which does not help her. She is not going to be able to learn. What I want to do is go right for her, and she goes right for me. That way we are learning. Now, what I said in the very beginning about this should not be called push hands, it should be called push bodies, if anything, or push legs. When Stephanie brings her energy towards me, is attacking me, I sink back and gather the energy into my qua, 
into my hip area, into my leg. This is what's called borrowing energy. My leg is now like a spring that has been compressed. Stephanie is sort of at the edge of her ability to do anything. When I've gathered my energy appropriately and, and the time is right, it comes springing out of my leg and forward up through my body and out my arm. So you could see it's, it's all coming from the legs. The arms are relaxed. It's all coming from the legs. Now, now this is all the basic warm-up and, and, and basic principles that we're, we're working with here yet. Now, <clears throat> we have two energies. So we have two energies, yin and yang. We have soft and firm. We have, uh, you don't have to go, you can stand here, it's all right, you can be here. Um, we have these two basic energies, and we always use neutralization first, soft first. Then there's only one small moment that we're firm when we're attacking. And then we immediately move into soft and sensing. But in order to push, Stephanie, I do have to firm my body up at the moment I want to, to uproot her. Other than that, I want to be very soft and sense what she's doing and go with her. So if we're going back to here, you see here, if, if we were, I'm very soft, we're both very soft, we're both following, and then say I decided I was going to push her, well then my energy would build and, you know, boom, you know, it would have to firm up and off she'd go. Okay, so that's some of the basic principles. Now, let's work on the most basic pattern. It's called horizontal single hand push hands. Horizontal, which means that we're going to go around in a circle, a horizontal plane. Now, it's basically the same thing we were just doing, only we're using uh, three basic energies of Taiji. The first is Pong. Pong is, here's Stephanie, and she is in, has her basic uh, uh, self-defense posture. Her, her wall, her castle wall is set up. She's firm, she's solid, and she's relaxed. This is soft but sensing. She, she has declared that this is her territory and this is where she's going to be. Okay, so that's Pong. Right now I am using on or push. I have this push and my energy is going to be to smash through this defensive system. Okay, so as I go to smash through this, she uses what's called Lu, just say one hand, you could just do Lu, or neutralize or roll back, and off my energy goes. So we've, we're working with three of the most basic energies. So she's in Pong, and I'm going to be pushing. As I push to her center, she neutralizes me off. Now, if she knew, if once I'm, once I'm, out there and exposed, I am going to want to come back into my center. As I start to withdraw, she then goes to push me into my center. She's following, remember, follow the energy. As I withdraw, she follows me and goes to close me up. As she does that, I neutralize her to the side. And then I push her she pushes me. Now, again, the same principles we work on. Here I am, I'm soft. She's pushing, I'm soft. I'm yielding, I'm yielding. Now, I'm firmed up, she's soft. So, we're, you can see this is working on the horizontal plane. She's pushing directly towards my center. Now, you notice here, if you can get a nice shot here, that she is pushing on my wrist. If she pushes on my hand, for instance, I can easily slip out and attack her. Or, 
for me, for my position, I don't have any strength. I can't control her. Okay, if she pushes on my forearm down here, this is solid. She has a good solid place. But my hand is still free to do things, you see. I can grab her. So, by using the wrist, if I'm on her wrist, I can grab, pull, push. I can control the whole arm. I can do locks and do various things. So, when we're using, when we're doing our single hand, or, and, and, to, and what we next we'll do would be four hands, we use the wrist. We push with the heel of the hand. The heel is where the bones come up. If I push with my fingers, try and push with the upper, I don't, and she resists in any way, I don't have the strength to overcome her because all of these little tendons and, are trying to hold it. So, and the same thing, even with the palm, if I use sort of the center of my palm, she can, you see, overcome that. By using the heel, placing the heel there, I've got my whole, I can use my whole body to push. So it's very important here, when you're doing this exercise, to use the heel against the wrist, okay? Now you'll notice at the end of each part of the circle, both hands roll over. Now watch. Now this is very important. If Stephanie goes to push me, so she's giving me a solid push, right? Pushing me away. She's pushing right into me. As she pushes, it, and I have, it only takes this much, and now her push is neutralized. Her energy is now, can no longer harm me. All I have to do is turn this much. Her energy is now going off there. That's all I need to do. Now, as I push Stephanie and she neutralizes me, now at that point, I can no longer push her. I have to, my energy is going over there. Her body is over there. I have to change my attack. My attack then, because see, I can't push in that direction. What we do is I roll over and now I'm going to press her and come in over the top, fold her in and smash her. <laughs> so now, now watch, now, as I push, she neutralizes. Now as I'm neutralized, I then come in and can push her here. Now if she does this to me, I neutralize and she starts to roll over. Well, I can roll over also and grab her. You see, now we'll do this slowly. As she pushes, now, she would start to roll over. I start to roll over because I can then change her energy by pulling her or something else. So in order to train these various skills, we make this little circle. So she pushes, I sink back and roll over, she rolls over. And so this becomes the exercise. Now it's very important to, even though this is firm, at the moment she starts to neutralize, I have to relax because otherwise we're vulnerable. If she's firm, stay firm, pushing, pushing, push, push, good and firm. If she is firm, I can manipulate her whole body because her whole body is attached to this wrist. If she is soft, she pushes, and she softens, well, you see, I, she can relax this and her whole body can move. But very important to stay, to stay uh, after, sort of, like if we just really let go, it would be like push, relax, push, relax, push, relax. This kind of thing. See? So you can do this as a training just to relax. You see? Good. Let's change your hands. 
Okay, so back once again to horizontal. The, I, my, my, I'm pushing towards the center, she neutralizes, she rolls over, I roll over and relax. She then pushes right to my center, I neutralize, she rolls over, I roll over. Now again, do not use strength. Use intention here. Even when I'm pushing, I feel like I'm kind of blowing up my balloon up. I'm, I'm full of air, not full of steel. So this is horizontal. You can see we're going in a horizontal plane. So it's all done with the legs, the waist, very little. The arms are just transmitting it to our partner. This energy that's coming through our body, it's, it's coming up to the hand and then out. It's not just, we aren't just moving the arms. That's, that's not Tai Chi at all. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's all in the legs. Okay, so this is what we call horizontal. Okay, the next step is vertical. <clears throat> now, this is basically the same pattern, only in this case, I'm going to be attacking, say, upward. As I attack to her head, she neutralizes me out and then comes in and pushes down into my center. You always follow, uh, like if I'm reaching up, she, the, she then follows with a downward movement. So this is what we call vertical. I am going right for her center. She's still doing the same neutralize. Again, we're turning over like we did before. She's on my wrist, and now she pushes down directly into my center. As it comes this way, I neutralize it off. Then I push towards her center and down. Now, there's, you're going to see a tendency to want to be raising the arms. No, you want to keep the shoulders relaxed. So it's very important you, you throw your intention where it wants to go. In this case, I'm moving right towards Stephanie's face, and she's moving right towards my belly. We're both emptying. I'm pushing, she's emptying, and now she fills, and I empty. This is the principle of yin and yang. When my partner is full, like here, she's filling, I'm emptying. When I'm filling, she's emptying. So that way we always keep balance. Right? This is what we call vertical. It's very important when you're emptying to relax, but stay connected, stay attached. Okay, other side. Okay, so let's have the other side. She can go for up. She can go, to, and you, you would reverse this, and she, you know, back and forth. But so as she goes up. I gently take it out of the way, then I push down towards her center, she neutralizes it out. And I stick, she sticks. Because okay. you see, she's extended here. So where's her energy wanting to go? In order to, draw, to, to get back into her center, she's going to drop back in, you see. So I'm going to follow her retreat into her center by pushing downward. So here she's expanded, I then come in. It's really wonderful if you can find a training partner to, to work with. I mean, it's a bit, you can't do this by yourself. Uh, so it's very important to be connected with a school or, or with some organization or finding somebody who can help you uh, with this particular training. Having a teacher, you need somebody who's more experienced than you to really learn. It's very difficult if you, you know, you, don't, you won't make any progress if you're always working with people who are less skilled than you. Okay, so this is vertical. Okay. Okay, the next one is what we call flip-flop. What I call flip-flop. And now other people call it that too. 
So in this case, so the first one I attacked with my palm to her center, she neutralized. So we had horizontal. Then we had vertical where we were attacking either up or down. This time what I'm going to do is I am going to poke from down, poke right towards her center, up. And as, as she, that happens, she neutralizes back and to the side. Okay. So there's a lot of techniques that will be using this sort of a pattern in your Tai Chi form. Now again, it's important to let go. When, when I'm expanded, I let go and stick. You see, if you, if you stay tight, you're going to be vulnerable to being easily attacked. So again, I'm coming in. She's drawing me over and down as, as she comes in. So now I'm down, she follows, and I take her back. So this is what we call flip-flop. The two wrists do not uh, separate in this flip-flop. Again, our, both of our intention is to come to the center, and it, we're not just using strength. We're not using the arm. She's coming in. It's my body. You see? She's coming in. My body is turning in, out of the way, you see? So even if she were to get me, it wouldn't be doing anything. And then this hand is just sort of taking it over to out of the way, right? And we do this practice. Okay, other side. Now, it, there's a tendency in all these to sort of just get into a, into a pattern of mindlessness. And, and, and some patterns are good to, to develop a sense, but you want to make sure sometimes you change your speed, change your intensity. And you can change like, for instance, I'll be the leader. So she's, I'm, I'm following, I'm, I'm going both ways, so she's following me both ways. You see, she's not initiating, she's just following. And so, and then she can do the same, da da da. So, this is what we call flip flop. Okay. Well, this is so good for the, for the waist, right? Okay, next. The next is what I call Gomer Pile, and it, the, uh, the name of it is Fold, Fold and Pile, Fold and Pile, or Close. So, this happens, this movement is very useful, and you'll see it if we get into four hands, is when I came towards the center, she, she, could, she prefers to have me over here. Because you can see I'm closed up and she's opened up. She can attack me and I can't attack her. So ideally for her, as I attack her, she wants to take me and close me up. Now, if she goes over here, you see, I'm open and she's closed. So that's not ideal for her. But if I push over here, she would have a hard time taking it. If I'm pushing over here, she'd have a hard time. She'd get all closed up, you could see. So she does a little movement where she neutralizes me first. As I'm pushing slightly off to the side, she comes back and draws me en my energy out. You see how I'm expanded. I, cannot lo I can no longer do anything. But I'm in a position where I can attack her. So she immediately circles my energy over and now I'm closed up. Now she pushes in and gets rid of me. So you see this is what's called fold and pile because here she folds me over and then piles it back into me. So this is the, this practice. So I'm pushing a little over there, she goes back. Now, if you push me, you do not, in this exercise, you do not bring the arm back and try and do this because you could see if I do this, I am closed up and I will be having a lot of problems bringing her energy over. Now if you look at this relationship here, look at this arm, when she pushes here, the arm stays on the same basic plane in front of me. You see? 
So you can see she's expanded out, but I'm pretty comfortable. Then I bring this whole thing over to this side and push her. So our practice now becomes, and again we're doing the same turning over. Now I'm on her wrist. At this point we're both turning over. Now, this one is very difficult because what happens is, if we change this side here, okay, she pushes. Now, the tendency is for me to raise my arm and try to do this with my arm, and then I'll be weak. The idea here is open your body. You see my torso is turning to the side. Then keeping the shoulder relaxed, you see. So I just basically keep the same arm position, come over to the side, and now I push her. So this is what we call fold and pile. So the whole time we're sticking to each other. As we're rolling over, you see, I'm sticking, we're sticking, we're sticking, we're sticking. At any moment, I, I, can't, I can't get out there because she's sticking. Right? So there, you, there should be no point of any of these circles where the sticking quality is any less. Now, stick does not mean hard. Stick means stick. Stick can be the very softest thing. It'd be like a fly on you, you see. It'd be like a fly touching you just j very gently. It's not like a, you know, like a tiger clutching you. Either one, certainly I would prefer the fly than the tiger. Okay, so that's, so, so far we've got horizontal, vertical, flip-flop, gomer pile. Now the next one, and last of this, uh, this series, is what we call silk reeling, chan su chin. And this is a little circle pattern. This is a little circle pattern. It's kind of fun. It's a lot of fun. And it sort of combines a lot of the things that we've just been doing. So it starts off with the, like the flip-flop pattern where I'm attacking her. She circles over. Now this time she just makes a big circle in front and now she attacks me. So I neutralize it. As she attacks, I'm doing like the vertical. This is the vertical. I press down. Circle over. Now I'm doing, did the flip-flop. Now I attack. She circles. And over. Actually what this is, is most of you are familiar with the, what we call the yin-yang symbol the black and white symbol. And we're actually tracing this symbol in the air. See, I'm, I'm making, we're both doing half of this yin-yang circle. Now, if, if, if I had together, if I had this together and we, you know, I could edit in the yin-yang symbol and then our hands on it, you could see that I'm uh, tracing, who am I facing? That we're, see, the circle, there's a circle, and then in the middle of the circle is the S. If you have the yin yang, you have the S. So what we're doing here is we're tracing this symbol and then the S. Now you can see here. She's tracing the symbol. She goes around. Now she makes her S. I go around my circle and make my S. So it's a little complicated, but it's simple once you, you, you get this. And this is what we call silk reeling, that this energy is coming from the center. Loose and free, sticking, relaxing. See, basically, she's attacking me. I neutralize it to the side. She's extended. I force her down and over, closing her up, then attack. Nice.
Okay, so we could change hands for this. <coughs> This is what we call silk reeling energy. Okay, very good. Now, one other thing that we should uh, put in here is, the, uh, is what we call pull. Now, the thing that keeps Stephanie, for instance, from just bashing in and pushing me, A, is I can neutralize it, but B, I can pull her. If she goes, if she's pushing too hard, excuse me, and she's coming sort of out of her route, I can pull her and then she's in trouble. So what we're going to do here is, so we do basically the horizontal, and at the end, instead of pushing her, I pull a little. Then I push her, she pulls. She pushes, I pull. pull. So this has to be very relaxed. When you get pulled, it's very important. When Stephanie pulls me, the tendency is to tighten up. And when I, when I tighten up, if she's strong enough, she just pulls my whole body or I'm vulnerable to getting pushed. So what happens is when she pushes me, pulls me, I relax. I relax. I relax. Okay? So this little exercise pulling. So I pull her and then I push her. She pulls me. She pushes me. So this is what we call pulling. It's a very important exercise. But you have to start off very easy, so you get the idea that you don't want to pull your arm out of the socket or anything like that. So again, you're using your body. Good. That's it. Now, an another thing that we generally do when we get pulled, when she pulls me, is I first bring this hand up to protect my elbow. And um, you'll see if we, uh, that in forehands, this is very important to protect yourself and to then move into press. So when we pull, we just let this hand come up. Very good pull. Thank you. Okay, so that's the, all of the basic fixed step uh, practices that we do. Now, so what we can do is, after you've learned these basic patterns, is put them all together into what we call free styling. So you just, you start off nice and easy, and you, you can do whatever you like, whenever you like, whatever pattern you feel comfortable with. And then, so you start to see, you see now I'm pushing over here, so she'd want to do that, right? If I'm pushing down. And then it works into where you're basically trying to attack the other person, pull them off balance, and you're using these, um, hopefully you're using these skills um, appropriately. Okay, so that, that is, a, I think, a pretty good uh, look at the, what we call the single hand. And, it, and it's, it's the basic uh, push hands uh, starting off place. You gain the skills that you need to then work into the rest. Now let's look at what we call forehands. It's a more complicated because we have twice the number of objects to be working with. Um, and yet it's really fun and it explains the basic 
Yang style. This is Yang, this is what we call Yang style push hands. There's Chen style push hands, Wu style push hands. Different styles have their own approaches to push hands um, or Tui Shao. I have mine, and uh, this is sort of the traditional Yang style approach. Um, okay, so in Tai Chi, we have the four basic energies Pang Lu Ji An. Pang Lu Ji An. Ward off, roll back, press, and push. Okay, and we're going to work with all of those four and and examine them and understand how they interact with each other, these four energies. Okay, so we're facing our partner once again. This time, she's in Pong, just like she started off with before. This is Pong. I am in, again, the same thing, but instead of using one hand here, I've got two hands. I still use her wrist, and I also use her elbow. The elbow is very is another place where the energy gets gets is easily controlled. You see, if I have her elbow, I can move. You see, I can move her whole body. I can keep. If she's attacking me here, I can keep very easily uh, manipulated. I can also move her whole body with her elbow. So we use the elbow a lot. So here, I am in. She's in Pong, and I am in what we're going to call on. I push her, and she rolls me back. Now, this hand, you see, this is doing the same thing. Only I'm still, I've got two hands involved. It doesn't matter how hard I push her. If she's connected, I'm, that's the direction I'm going. I, 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 you know, off I go. Okay. Now, if she just does that, my energy, if you can notice, my energy is just coming right in here. In, in Tai Chi, we always fold. So when I go like this, this starts to fold and come in. Well, she doesn't want that to happen. So as this comes in, she brings her other arm up to my elbow. As I said, the elbow is very important. Now. You see, she's got a very strong structure. She's controlling my elbow, and she's actually controlling, she's on my wrist. I, I, I'm virtually, at this point, I am overcome. See? So I'm closed up, she's on my elbow, and uh, I've, I've completely lost that energy. Okay, so what I'm now going to do, I push, she rolls back. Now she's pretty, she thinks she's in pretty good shape at the moment. So I'm going to do what's called G or press. Now see, she's okay here, but what I'm going to do, I told you this when we did this, the, the two hands, she's ready for me, look at her, she's getting all ready, is I'm going to change my attack. My attack is now going over here. I'm going to come back into her center this way and attack her this way. So I'm going to fold in and press down into her. So this explains, you see, she's in Pong. Pong is overcome. It's sort of like, um, you come over here this way a little bit. Pong is overcome with on, push. Pong, ward off is overcome. When she wards off, I break it and push. That energy, her pong energy, is overcome with on energy. Okay. So she's in pong. I overcome it with on, but on energy push is overcome by what we call lu or roll back. As I push, she retreats and neutralizes me. So pong energy is overcome by on energy, which is sort of down and in. Push or on is overcome by lu or roll back. Roll back energy is overcome by what we call g or press. I fold her in and go downward and into her. 
Now, there's so many things that go on in this little, this quick, this little teeny exercise. Right? So we have our same thing. So I push, she rolls back, I press. Now, she's going to do a little movement called hua or neutralize. This is the most difficult part of this, is she's going to be fine. My energy is now going into her this way. So she's going to empty and lead it down over here which is sort of like a hua is very similar to lu or roll back, you see, and now she she's can either pull me down or uh, she could push me, you see. So that's the basic routine and then we're going to go backwards and forwards. So she's in pong and I am in an. I push. She rolls back, coming up to my elbow. I turn over and fold in and press to her center. She then neutralizes. Now, at this point, I move into Pong. You see, now I'm in Pong. She pushes me, closed. As she pushes me, I roll back. I encourage her in further than she wants to go. She then presses into my center. As she presses, I neutralize, I mean, yeah, hua, empty. Now I can pull her down, or in this case, she then comes back into pong. So here's our pattern. I push, she rolls back. I press, she neutralizes, I'm in pong. She pushes, I roll back. She presses, I hua, neutralize. So, So timing, sensitivity, it's all very important here. Now this, this, uh, uh, let's change hands, this doesn't look, it looks complicated, does it not? Probably looks a little bit complicated. It's not. Once you, once you get the idea, now, I am in Pong. She is in An. She is pushing down and in. I Lu, roll back. Now, if you notice, when she pushes, I stick onto her and, and guide her over here. Just like doing the flip-flop. Just like doing the flip-flop. The tendency is you're going to want to turn over here, you see. And if, and, and if she pushes and I turn over, then she could jam me very easily. You see? So as she pushes, I gently lead her. At the same time, this is inviting her in. I want to be catching onto her elbow and drawing her inward. You see? In, in, in Chen style, other styles, when she pushes, they, they come up and roll the body over. It's more of a rolling over motion. In, in this, uh, in Yang style, we don't do that quite so much. So she pushes, I roll back. Now the minute she the minute she feels neutralized, she she starts to roll over, and it's this hand it starts to fold in. The other hand comes and presses. The idea is if she can gather my two hands, she can gather this hand in. Uh, if she doesn't get the hand, and she just uh, say say we're pushing, and she doesn't get the hand, she comes in. Well, this hand is free, and I can maybe do it. She, the, ideally. When she does this, she gets me into the center. So, so at this point, I then just this just easy fold and empty, and she comes into palm. Now you'll see a lot of people uh, do it like um, when she when she pushes, is is neutralized with the hand on the uh, so you do push with the hand on the elbow. You see, we do it with the hand up here. Now I do this for various reasons. One, if I'm here, 
I can pull, but I can't, this is the only thing I can basically do. I can't attack her very easily, you see? And there's basically not too much of a threat to her. When I do it like she pushes, when I do it like this, you see, this hand is a big threat to her. I have the, the strength of my forearm against her here, which I can easily break her arm, but this is a, a, a very nice um, attack. And then when she does G, see, this just folds over here. Whereas if I'm here, say we, you do push, and I'm here and she does G, well, I have to disengage and come over here, which then allows her elbow to, to make some changes. So that's why when, uh, when she pushes and I roll back, I come up and yeah. Okay, so this is now the practice. Now you want to make sure, again, you're using your body. You're sticking the entire time. Feeling, moving with the person's energy. You want to be as soft as possible, even when attacking. In the beginning, you don't want to add firmness yet. You want to be very, very soft. You see? How soft? How soft? How soft? Right? The softer we can be, the easier we can blend and move, you know, sort of like a yeah, a, a little uh, dandelion seed in the wind, you know. How soft is that? Yeah, good. Okay. So that's the very basic forehands training technique. And it comes from, from uh, uh, the Yang style. Now there's another one, a form of this that's a little more abstract. It's the same basic four energies, but it becomes a little more abstract, okay? So let's look at this. A lot of people do uh, this one. Still Pong Lu Chi An. So, so here's Pong, there's Lu Chi An, but we, it becomes very much, see here's Lu, here's G, there's, there's Pong, there's Push, there's roll back, there's press. So many, many people do this particular form. And it's, it's, uh, it's easier to do once you've mastered uh, sort of this connection skill, you see? So here you see, remember we did fold and pile? Here's the fold and pile. You see there's her press, here's my on. So it's a kind of a fold and pile for uh, four hands practice. Now, at some point, we're going to examine this uh, more closely. We don't have time to work on this, but we're just going to demonstrate. We're going to demonstrate what we call changes or ways when you get tired of going in one direction or for some reason you want to change your attack, we have these things that are called changes. And let's, let's, I'll just show you. The first one is when my partner goes to do roll back. You see here she starts to do her roll back. When she starts up, I stop her and I come in and I'm going to attack over on this side. So when she does it, I stop her and I come in and then she immediately comes in and does fold and pile. And now we've changed the direction our hands are headed. You see, my hand is headed to the back wall. See, both of our hands, the top hand that comes in, heads to the back wall. Now, when I stop her and I attack, she comes in. Now you'll notice that my hand is now going towards the camera. This is what we call changes. And there are, there are a few, quite a few different changes. And there's reasons why you want to make a change. The first one is what I just said, that uh, you're going to, um, you want to attack the person. So here I stop, I come in, and she makes the change. I stop. Okay, this is what we call change number one, when she is starting, just starting to do her rollback. 
The next time is when she starts to press, I secure that and now I attack her. So I see her body is forward when she's pressing. So I stop her and attack her there and she rolls back. So now we're changing. Now our hands are going towards the camera. I stop her. Now our hands are going towards the wall. So these are little, this is a little change. So I've overcome her rollback and I've overcome her press. The next time I want to overcome and make a change is when she's pushing me. When she goes to push, I open her back, see, whoa, and follow with a pong, and she then makes a change. So now you see my hand is going towards the camera. As she pushes, I open her up. I go then to Pong, she does this, and now we've changed and our hands are facing towards the wall. So that's when she was pushing that she made that change. Next change is when she pushes, I roll her back, just like we looked at it single hand. Then I go to attack her and she makes a change. So now you see our hands are going towards the camera. I roll her back and attack her. Now our hands are going towards the back wall. All this seems, it seems sort of so mystical. And then we can mix them up. So these, uh, This is all so much fun. So, um, Stephanie, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I really appreciate Stephanie helping me. It's not an easy job to, to be the sort of training dummy while the other person's uh, talking and all of that. OK, well, as always, I always intend to do a lot more than I ever end up doing because it's important to examine these things closely. But in another tape, we'll look at uh, these, some more forehands techniques. And we'll, we'll also, this has been fixed hands, and we'll move into active stepping, where we'll examine foot movements. So I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I look forward to uh, seeing you again sometime soon. So thank you very much. And um, good luck to you in your training. Thank you. Do you want to?